Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, welcome to Pioneer, celebrating the achievements of Reza Moridi. We have quite a lineup of dignitaries actually waiting outside that door, and I'm going to ask everybody to put their hands together and welcome our guests of honor for tonight. If I can hear you, make some noise for Dr. Gina Parvanet Cody, member of the Board of Governors of Concordia University. I will make some noise for Dr. Matthew Shokri, former president of York University. for a quick group photo. go back to their seats now so we can start the formal portion of our program. Thank you. I'm going to let our dignitaries take their seats so we can begin. Once again, good evening ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. My name is Kimia Gorban, and I'm going to be your master of ceremony for tonight. Now, I only have one ask, and I know MCs usually don't start the program by asking for a favor. But here I am, and I'm going to ask you to take a vow of silence for one hour. I know it's gonna be hard, I know. Believe me, silence is a very interesting thing. It ignites a lot of emotions sometimes too. And let us have Rumi guide us when he says, the quieter you become, the more you're able to hear. And I want all of you guys to hear everything that we have tirelessly put together for you tonight. So help me set the tone to tonight's event with your silence. And as a courtesy to our speakers, presenters, as well as those around you, please turn off your phones or put it on silent. 
and we can begin. And one more thing about silence. If you think about it, the word listen and silent are actually spelt with the same letters. So it's a matter of how we want to see it. I promise there will, there will be lots of time for networking, maybe a little bit of gossiping during dinner. And there will be a lot of music and a lot of dancing. But let's please be silent and attentive during the program portion of this evening. This evening would not have been a success without the overwhelming support of our sponsors. Bear with me as I go through a long list of some very awesome people that have uh, sponsored us tonight. Thank you to our sponsors, Adam Safe from Safe Law Firm, Ali Donishvad from Owen Wright Corporate and Real Estate Lawyers, Arya Kem Inc., Arizon Supermarket, Atena Construction, Envision Realty Inc. Brokerage, Green Flow Financial, International Development and Relief Foundation, Images 2000 Inc., Lexpan Legal Professional Corporation, Liberty Development, Iranian Canadian Builders Association, Mackenzie Health Foundation, Magna International, Mashi Yusufi Home Life Baby Realty Inc. Brokerage, Powerline Plus Limited, PRN Pharmacists, Rasa Trading Company, Lenders for Growth, RS Homes, Times Group, Vakili Law Group, Zamani Homes. Thank you to all of our in-kind sponsors, Anna Pastry, Association of Gilan Supporters of Toronto, Ali Reza Firuzi, Bana Flores, DJ Siamak, Hassan Anami, La Park Banquet Hall, Mackenzie Health Foundation, Miros Musical Ensemble, Nader Naderi, Sina Light, Youssef Savalon, and thanks to Mr. and Mrs. Mahluji, Mr. and Mrs. Fa Fazolahi, Mrs. Marjan El Ruhani, Buzari Family, and to our media sponsors, Shahfand, Shahrama, ITCD TV, Iran Star, Canada Star TV, Radio Sedaya Iran, Pasarga TV, Persian Mirror, 1001 World Multimedia Production, and thank you to all of those who endorsed us tonight, Association of Gilan Supporters of Toronto, Baharan, Canadian Iranian Association, Canadian Iranian Medical Association, Canadian Society of Iranian Good and Nutrition Scientists, Fair Dosi Historical Society, Iranian Canadian Fire Festival, Iranian Canadian Builders Association, Iranian Women's Organization of Ontario, Iranian Ontario Dental Association, Iranian Canadian Legal Professionals, Iranian Canadian Youth Support Organization, Mohandas, Persian Moms Organization, Patio Trillium Foundation, Professional Iranian Canadian Real Estate Association, Shenoff Association, and Tiergon. Thank you for your continued support in making tonight a reality. A round of applause for all of us supporters. Please. I would like to kindly ask everyone to please rise for our national anthem. What is unique about this evening's performance of the national anthem is that, aside from the traditional English and French versions, our talented tenor soloist, Mr. Hassan Anami, will also perform it in Farsi. Please rise.
I had an excellent relationship as the mayor of Toronto and uh, was very committed to all the work that Grayson did, especially in the area of innovation, which I'm going to make some uh, reference to. And I can tell you, because she still represents a riding that's in the city of Toronto, that she continues. Many people, when they retire uh, as premier, don't uh, you know have, keep the same level of activity. She's everywhere uh, in serving her community, and I'm delighted always uh, to see her, and that includes tonight. And I, I, I'm very glad that she's here, uh, as we all are paying tribute to Grayson. Now, I, I owe a lot of things uh, to Raisin, but I will tell you the most important story uh, that where he helped me the most, and it was at a Nauru celebration uh, up in North York at the North York uh, Performing Arts Center, and I told him that I was going to make reference to uh, what kind of an unusual holiday was it, uh, Nauru's, where people uh, spent time and focused on cleaning their homes in the spring. And I said that I was going to make reference to uh, to Kula Tejoni, and, and Razor said to me, oh, John, he said, look, uh, he said, uh, he said that be, be very, very careful how you pronounce that because you can be grossly misunderstood. <laughs> and I, I, I still don't know exactly what I could have done and what trouble I could have been in, but I just know that he told me I would have been in grave trouble, and I hope I pronounced it properly tonight so I'm not in trouble. Otherwise, it might be another reason why I should leave town uh, quickly. <laughs> quite properly review uh, Reza's amazing uh, resume and they will speak of his uh, professional and his political and his academic uh, contributions and the things he's done for the community and even tonight he's still doing something for the community by allowing himself to be, uh, to be, uh, to be uh, have, to have tribute paid to him in this way that's going to benefit, benefit the McKenzie Health Foundation. Uh, and I can just tell you for me, uh, it was extraordinary for me when I was uh, seeking the job of Mayor of Toronto in 2014 and he took me around which he didn't have to do and uh, introduced me to all elements of the wonderful Iranian Canadian community in Toronto. Uh, I was never quite sure what he said when he was introducing me, but it turned out well, so I figured it must have been, must have been good. But I will tell you where I came to have even more respect for him. Uh, what was it? One day we were coming up to an event, I think, here in Richmond Hill, and he agreed uh, to give me a ride in his car uh, up, up uh, to here in Richmond Hill. It was at the end of the day. Uh, and it was rush hour and the traffic was bad on the parkway. I meant to speak to somebody about that, but I wasn't sure who to talk to. But um, he, he had the time in that car ride, which might have been 45 or 50 minutes, to give me only the briefest summary of his life and how he had come to Canada and what he had experienced uh, as a person of great achievement, obviously, a great determination, great courage uh, in Iran and his circumstances leading to his coming here. And of course, I was more aware of what he had achieved once he got here. And I had respect for him already before he told me that story, but I had such respect for him after that. Uh, and I don't know how you couldn't have a great affection for this man as well, because he's just a man that it's hard not to like. And when I read you the, uh, the scroll that I've uh, brought here on behalf of the, the city of uh, Toronto, you'll understand how much I feel that he is a role model. And of course, he, he became an MPP and a minister as, as uh, what is not the end of his career, because I'm sure there are chapters yet to be written. But as a as, as two incredible chapters, as a member of the provincial parliament for Richmond Hill, and of course, as minister. And maybe I can just sum up what I saw for myself when he was a minister by saying this. Uh, last week, the city of Toronto was blessed uh, with investments that came in one week from Microsoft, uh, Intel, uh, Uber, and a great Canadian company called Shopify. And between them, uh, between them all, in separate investments, they invested 1.4 billion dollars in the city of Toronto. And I believe that's good for the whole region. And they created hundreds of new jobs, or they will by making these investments create hundreds of new jobs. And I can tell you right now, it's just true to say, I'm not just saying it because I'm at a tribute dinner for him, but it is true to say that the work he did, both as Minister of Colleges and Universities and as Minister of Innovation, were responsible, including things like the uh, the uh, free tuition program brought in by Premier Wynne and by Raisin Greedy. This is a vital thing that uh, attracts these people. They're attracted by our talent and by our way of life, uh, both of which we should remain committed to as people. But he was instrumental, as was the Premier, in making sure that those policies were a reality. And today we are seeing the fruits of those labors because we're seeing these fantastic investments. And it's not just the big companies making investments, it's the hundreds of startups, people who have the confidence uh, of, of knowing they had a great education here and had the confidence of uh, people in government like Razor Marie who stood behind them and said this is something that is going to be good uh, for Ontario, good for Toronto and for the GTA and good for Canada. And so I just want to say thank you to him, uh, but more important than all of that is just this man as a person. 
I don't think I've met too many people in public life that uh, demonstrated on a daily basis the decency and the civility uh, and, and was such a proud representative of this wonderful community. And I think you know of the affection I've come to have for this community that he introduced me to. I've met some people before, but he introduced me to many more. And I just can't think of a person uh, who I admire more that was in public life uh, than uh, Raisin Marie. And I hope he's going to find a way to continue to make a public contribution. And I'll just read you, you know, unfortunately, you always like to try and give more to people when they, you know, retire from such a distinguished public service career or anything else. Um, when you work for the United Way, they give you a t-shirt. When you do work that benefits the City of Toronto, you get one of these scrolls. Uh, and it's all we can do, but it's very meaningful nonetheless. And here's what it says. It says, Mayor John Torrey and members of Toronto City Council extend warmest congratulations and best wishes to Dr. Raisin Brady on all of your achievements during your exemplary career. You've been an accomplished engineer, physicist, member of provincial parliament, and minister. Your work as minister was key to the success we are now enjoying in attracting jobs, investment, and smart people to Toronto. As the first Iranian-Canadian elected official in Canada, you've paved the way for many Iranian-Canadian community members to become more politically aware and involved. Thank you for being a thoughtful leader, a dedicated public servant, a great friend, and above all, a decent person and a role model for all of us in public life, including me. And I have signed it as the Mayor of Toronto, and I'm very pleased to uh, find you. Thank you, Mayor Tory, for being with us here tonight. And while you're on the campaign trail, we know it's tough. So it means a lot to us. And I don't know if Dr. Moridi explained the difference between the KH and the K in Honetekoni, but there is a huge difference between a house and your behind. <laughs> all right. As you all know, at Dr. Moridi's request, all proceeds from tonight's Tribune Gala will directly go to the Mackenzie Health Foundation. Yes, please, let's hear it for the ways in which Resumerity still continues to give back to his community. And to speak about Mackenzie Health Foundation, we have Mr. John Mills with us tonight. So if I could ask all of you to help me in welcoming him to the stage. Mr. John Mills, the director of McKenzie Health Foundation. Thank you very much and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a pleasure for me to be here uh, tonight on behalf of Mackenzie Health Foundation uh, to celebrate a, a wonderful human being and, uh, and the accomplishments he's had over the years. Uh, accompanying me this evening from Mackenzie Health is our CEO, Ingrid Perry, and, uh, who is at the table. You know, this is an exciting time for Mackenzie Health. Uh, we've worked very hard to, uh, in the process of providing patient care and we're in the uh, position of uh, what you're doing this evening will help us in that regard. You know, there hasn't been a hospital built in York region in 30 years. And during that time, the population has doubled. Soon, Mackenzie Health will encompass two full-time hospitals and a number of community uh, services. Yes, I, you heard me right. There have been rumors that the Richmond Hill Hospital will close. That is not going to happen. Instead, Mackenzie Health will operate both Mackenzie Richmond Hill and Mackenzie Vaughan Hospital, providing state-of-the-art services for the residents of Southwest York Region. You know, Mackenzie Health Foundation is undertaking the largest campaign fundraising drive for a community hospital in Canada. The $250 million the Exceptional Care Belongs Here campaign is underway and it will help build and equip both hospitals and enhance care uh, for the patients in Richmond Hill and beyond. I'm pleased to tell you that early on in the campaign we've already raised $113 million towards that bowl goal. Mackenzie Health is committed to provide world-class 
care to our patients uh, as close to home as possible. As a former, uh, the former Richmond Hill MTP, Dr. Murdy has been a stalwart supporter of McKenzie Hill, particularly in our innovations agenda, testing and implementing innovative technologies and enhancement to create safer and more efficient patient care now and into the future. You may also know that Dr. Murdy and his wife established a bursary in memory of their beloved son, Mehar, to support the professional education and development of our nursing and allied healthcare providers. This special tribute is a reflection of the Murdy family's dedication to supporting the advancement of healthcare in our community through innovation, education, and research. Mackenzie Vaughan Hospital will be the first smart hospital in Canada, which integrates technology systems and medical devices that communicate directly with one another across the 1.2 million square feet of the new campus in Vaughan and with the Mackenzie Richmond Hill Hospital. Thanks to our generous donors and supporters like Dr. Murray, we were able to test and evaluate and enhance the cutting edge systems and technologies now at the Mackenzie Richmond Hill Hospital that will guide and inform the healthcare practices and design at our two sites. On behalf of Mackenzie Health, the foundation, and most importantly, our patients and, our, and their families, I extend a heartfelt thank you for your generous support in help us, helping us ensure world-class uh, health care for our uh, communities. Thank you and enjoy the evening. Mention and commemorate the hard work of the previous government and advocates such as MPP Moridi and former MPP for Vaughan, Stephen Del Duca, who's also in the room, to secure $1.3 billion in provincial money for the Mackenzie Vaughan Hospital. Because they understand that when you are sick or a loved one is sick, your whole world entirely shrinks to the size of a hospital bed. And I'm very proud to be able to say that three of my former bosses, Kathleen Wynne, Dr. Reza Moridi, and Stephen Del Duca, played a huge role in making sure that Vaughan, as the biggest, as the largest city in Canada, without a hospital, will soon have a hospital. Please, a round of applause for these amazing advocates. As you all know, Reza Moridi has been an active and influential figure in a variety of spheres. For the main segment of our program tonight, we'll hear from five speakers, each of whom will touch a different element of Dr. Moridi's work, from politics to science, from science to community. So let's get started. First, speaking about Dr. Moridi's influence on politics is a woman who really needs no introduction. She began her life in politics as a school board trustee, was then elected to the Ontario Legislature in 2003, where she went on to serve in a variety of cabinet capacities. And in 2013, she became Ontario's first female premier and won a majority mandate in 2014 provincial election and she continues to serve as the MPP for Don Valley West. Please help me in welcoming the Honorable Kathleen Wynne. Thank you very much, Camille. It's very, uh very much a pleasure to be here with all of you. Good evening, everyone. And to Reza, yay Reza. Thank you so much for everything. I'm sorry John's gone. We couldn't have uh, razzed him about his um, Farsi. But I thought, I thought that maybe uh, we were going to talk about jumping over fire and Shashan Basuri and re the, the video Reza and I were in dancing that apparently millions of Iranian, uh, Iranians around the world have seen. 
Um, it is, uh, it's such a pleasure to be here and um, Jane and I are very happy to be here to, uh, to celebrate Reza and also to support the, uh, the well-being of the Mackenzie Health Centre, which was York Central Hospital, which Jane's dad was the architect who built a million years ago. Um, and it was the hospital that my dad practiced in, uh, because what there was, when I was a kid in Richmond Hill, there was no hospital. Patients had to go to York County, which is now Southlake in Newmarket, so I'm really, really old, is all that means. But I want to just I want to just say thank you to all of you for supporting this terrific project because it is so important to the people of York Region and uh, and it is a wonderful institution and uh, it is great that you're here to support it. Reza is one of the as John has already said a lot of what uh, John said I want to just reinforce. Reza Moridi is one of the finest, most decent men I have ever met in my life. He is. He truly is. I met him as uh, a candidate for the Liberal Party. He represented the riding of Richmond Hill that my parents live in, so we always got to have a Reza Moridi sign on my parents' lawn. He's a fine, accomplished man. He's an academic. But he chose to embark on a path of public service when he could have continued in his career in so many different directions. But he chose a path of public service because he believes so strongly in the importance of government to be a, a force of good in people's lives. And we saw that throughout all of his time at Queen's Park. He brought an international perspective. Now, you know, those of us who I was born and raised in, uh, in Richmond Hill, so this is coming home for me. And I have traveled the world, but I have never had the kind of experience that John was talking about that Reza shares with all of us, and that so many of you in this room share. And I can't begin to tell you how important it is that we have people like Reza in our governments, in a multicultural, pluralistic society like Canada, like Ontario, because that perspective is what we need in order to make good decisions. We need a mix of people who have been here for a long time or a short time, because apart from Indigenous people, we are all immigrants. We have come from somewhere else, and we've come to build a society that reflects all of us. And without those voices at the table, we can't do that. So Reza was a very, very important person because sometimes when we would get a little bit parochial and we would be talking about issues from a narrow perspective, perspective Reza could lift us up and say, but look at what's happening in other parts of the world. He pulled me aside many times and said, Kathleen, we need to be broadening our trade base. We need to be looking around the world. He traveled to other parts of the world, took our nuclear expertise to other parts of the world to help them. So that international perspective and the importance of Reza's voice was something I relied on. One of the hardest things about being the premier is building your cabinet. And that is, uh, that is true no matter who you are. But I can tell you, making a decision to have Reza Moridi as part of my cabinet was not a difficult decision. His name was on that page from the beginning. So let me just say this, and I know I've been told I can't talk too long, and I, I will, I will very quickly come to an end here, but I want to just say that we need to be very careful in this moment in North America, but in looking at what's happening in other parts of the world, because so much of what a man like Reza Moridi stands for, and so much of the work that he has done to bring people to this province because of our education system. As the Minister of Training Colleges and University, Reza understood how important it was that we have excellence in our system. He wants many, many more Nobel Prizes to come out of uh, Ontario. He was always talking to us about how we could foster that. His commitment to science and research and policy that was rooted in evidence 
is so, so important. That value system that he held that said, as we make decisions, let's look at the evidence. Let's look at and make sure that the decisions we are making are rooted in evidence. That value system, that understanding of how good decisions get made is not necessarily shared by governments. I won't even, I won't even specify, but the reality is that decisions are being made in our jurisdiction and in other jurisdictions south of the border in other places that are not rooted in evidence, where science has not got a strong role to play. And so the decency, the honesty, the commitment to strong government policy that Reza Moridi uh, exemplified is something we need more of. We need more Reza Moridi in this world. So, Reza will continue to be a leader in the Iranian-Canadian community and in the broader Canadian society, I know that. And if anything, his voice is even more important now because of that political culture that I was just talking about. He understands the importance of unifying forces because he has experienced a bitterly divided society. And we do not want to become a bitterly divided society. So the experience of Reza Moridi is extremely important and we need to pay attention to his voice. Whether we are in government or not, we need to pay attention to his voice. So, I want to express my personal thanks, Reza, to you. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for helping and guiding us as we uh, formed government, as we made decisions. Thank you for the contributions that you have made to young people in this province, to all the young people who are starting businesses, who got grants because of the work that you did. They are the future and you helped to foster that future. I also want to express my personal thanks to Reza and to Pari. Um, yes. Their resilience, their ability to be generous of spirit through everything that they have lived through as families do, has been a gift to the people of Ontario. And so to Reza, Hari, thank you so very much. Merci. Now, most of you know that in his capacity as the Minister of Training Colleges and Universities and the Minister of Research, Innovation and Science, Dr. Maridi left an important imprint on the Ontario scientific landscape. To speak about that, I would like to ask Dr. Mehrdad Hariri to join me in a moment. Dr. Hariri is the CEO and founder of Canadian Science Policy Centre, a national multidisciplinary forum dedicated to the Canadian science technology and innovation policy discussions, engaging hundreds of organizations from various sectors and across the country to discuss the most pressing issues in Canadian science and innovation sector. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Mehrdad Hariri. Wow. Farz salam, khidmat hamegi mihmanan aziz. Les invités distincts, mesdames et messieurs, bonsoir. It is an absolute pleasure to be in front of this esteemed audience and say a few words about the accomplishments of Dr. Reza Moridi. And I must confess that I was given only three minutes and I have a very long list, and I believe it's a very long list of his achievements. So I have two choices. Either use the three minutes, same as Mayor John Tory, or just cut the list and say, just mention a few of Dr. Moridi's achievements. Uh, science and innovation landscape is like an ecosystem. A lot of ingredients, a lot of elements that all interrelated in order to uh, make sure that ecosystem is healthy and growing, you need a comprehensive support for all these elements. And that's what Dr. Moridi did during his time as Minister and Parliamentary Assistant for Science and Innovation in Ontario. He ensured a stable and increased funding for scientific research throughout all the province for various institutes in different projects. And today, Ontario's output in scientific research is the top in the country. He supported innovation through major initiatives such as 
venture capital funds, business growth initiative, network of entrepreneurs, Vector Institute, and many others that supported small and medium innovative enterprises and young entrepreneurs and startups. And I must mention the Phase 2 Mars that made Mars as one of the biggest innovation hubs in the world. He led scientific investments in transformative technologies, such as artificial intelligence, autonomous vehicles, G5 digital infrastructure, quantum computing, cybersecurity, regenerative medicine, and many others. And these investments changed the landscape of science and innovation in Ontario and made Ontario a magnet for investment, for talent, and of course, as a result, creating thousands of well-paid jobs. Another dimension of comprehensive support for science and innovation is international collaborations. For science and innovation, international engagement is a must. And today's science is among the most globalized enterprises. Even threats to international treaties cannot change that trend. And Dr. Marie supported and strengthened the linkages of Ontario science and innovation enterprises with the entire world with various projects with different countries, including Japan, China, South Korea, Armenia, Israel, South Africa, and many others. Let me also add a recognition of the presence of both current and former presidents of York University and Mayor of Markham, that the expansion of York University campus to Markham City that he championed. But I would like to emphasize on three exceptional initiatives that are extremely important to my view and are very close to my heart. First, initiating the process to establish the first ever standalone French language university in Ontario, la toute première université francophone en Ontario. Second, the establishment of the position of chief scientist in Ontario in order to advise the Ontario government to develop better policies that are based on evidence and scientific knowledge and sincerely hope that the office continue its work. And last, one single transformative reform, first time in Ontario, and to my knowledge, first in Canada. The modernization of student loan system by making university tuition free for low-income families in Ontario in my view, among the most transformative changes that we have had in post-secondary education, which has significant societal impact in Ontario. Young boys and girls of low-income families no longer have to abandon their dream because they cannot afford university education. And for all these, please join me in, well, in thanking Dr. Reza Moridi and his achievements and impact in Ontario science at this stage. Many of you know that throughout his career, Dr. Rosemarini has been a, a vocal defender of human rights across the world, particularly in his country of birth, Iran. To speak about Dr. Marini's human rights efforts, we'll be hearing from Ms. Nazanin Afshin Jan McKay. Now, for the very few of you who may not know Nazanin, Nazanin is an Iranian-Canadian public speaker, artist, and human rights activist. She's a former Miss World Canada who has used her fame and platform to co-found and lead an organization called Stop Child Executions. She's also the founder of Nazanin Foundation. So please join me in welcoming to the stage Ms. Nazanin Afshin Jam McKay. with my father and my two-month-old baby, Kaladin Cyrus, who's out there and I hear his little cries, so I don't know who has more separation anxiety, me or him right now. On behalf of all of us in this room, on behalf of the constituents of Richmond Hill, Canadians and the Iranian diaspora, I am honored to be among the few to thank not only Dr. Moridi, a true gentleman, a hard-working, kind, compassionate man, but also his wife Patty and his children for their combined sacrifice. Because not many people know, 
truly understand the time and energy it takes to be in political office. Serving as an MPP and having a ministerial portfolio to boot. Dr. Moridi's family had to sacrifice husband, father time for the greater good of the community. I can sympathize during the time my husband served as federal minister. And being a politician is not a nine to five job. Beyond meetings, committees, and debates in the legislature, Dr. Moridi would be serving his constituents, keenly listening to their concerns and wishes, not just in meetings in the office, but out in the streets and grocery stores and banks, at announcements, community and cultural events, banquets, um, ribbon cuttings, and among various groups and lobbyists. So thank you for choosing to support the Persian community in particular in cultural outreach on joyous occasions like Nowruz, having it proclaimed in a motion, and helping in tough times on questions of immigration, refugees, and human rights. Dr. Moridi, as we all know, you've seen in the video as well, is a staunch advocate for democracy and human rights in Iran and could be seen at rallies, protests, film screenings, book launches, and important talks with various levels of government on the Iran file concerning women being treated as second-class citizens, the persecution of ethnic and religious minorities, those facing wrongful imprisonment or execution, as we already heard, Saeed Malikpour, the award-winning, uh, the web designer and the award-winning uh, human rights advocate in Iran, Nassim Sotoudeh, and serving and echoing the larger hopes of the Iranian people for a free Iran, like we saw after the 2009 presidential elections or more recently this year with all the protests in Iran. Dr. Moridi, you will be remembered for serving on the right side of history and not pandering to different groups, but instead with a strong, clear voice, having the courage to be vocal in admonishing the regime officials for corruption, violations of human rights, and stealing the souls of the Iranian people. I always marvel watching you, Dr. Moridi, your smile, your warm smile, and how you deal so diplomatically with our Hambatans, because we have to be honest here, our community is not the easiest one to please. We are opinionated, passionate, and we have various views and backgrounds to say the least. So to be re-elected three times over and to be given a second portfolio on top of another really says a lot about the kind of man that you are. Moridi has proven strength over adversity. Another admirable quality about Dr. Moridi is his capacity to not be bogged down in partisan politics, but work with various groups and political stripes to get the job done. I'm sure his background as a physicist and engineer helped hone these great qualities for working as a team player. We are not here to say goodbye. Rather, we're here to say farewell the Iranian community here and elsewhere still need your expertise and guidance and experience as we enter a new challenging and painful but promising phase in our history where we can see the light of day and the demise of the dictatorship in the country of our birth. You have served us and Canada so graciously. Thank you again for your family for lending you to us God bless. Thank you, Nazani, for your kind words and recognizing Dr. Rizmaridi's efforts as a fellow human rights activist. Thank you for recognizing the humanity of other people and respecting their dignity. And much like Dr. Muridi, Thanks for becoming the voice of those who cannot be heard and for creatively navigating your place in the world to make a difference in other people's lives. And I know Nazani mentioned that we're quite a high maintenance sort of a community, which I think speaks to our good taste in things.
But I have to say that my community is making me very proud tonight because you guys have been amazing in keeping quiet and being very attentive to all of the speakers, even though probably your stomachs are pretty hungry and that's all you're hearing right now. So, I, I just have one announcement right now before our next speaker, and again, we're very close to our dinner. Um, Patty June has lost her bracelet. Uh, it's a gold bracelet, from my understanding. So if anyone finds this bracelet, please bring it forward. She's lost the precious one. So at this time, I would like to invite Mr. Hassan Dai to the stage. Mr. Dai is a human rights activist and a political analyst. He's well published in Farsi and English and has briefly appeared as an expert guest on The Voice of America. He's also the editor of the Iranian American Forum. I present to you Mr. Hassan Dai. Good evening. I'm honored to be with you tonight. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to express my deepest gratitude to Dr. Moridi for his service to the Iranian community. Please allow me to explain briefly why, as an Iranian American who lived in Europe, I'm grateful to him. Since the clerical regime seized power in Iran, four decades ago, between five to six million Iranians have been forced to leave their motherland and begin a new life in another country where they could live freely and build a better future for themselves and their children. Nearly half of them are living in the United States, in Canada, and in Europe, making a vibrant successful Iranian community and we are learning how to participate in political process in our new countries. But no matter how successful we are or where we live, here in Europe or like tens of thousands of Iranians trapped in the refugee camps or living under UN protection in third world countries, we feel strongly about our motherland about our identity and our culture. We know that more than 80 million of our fellow Iranians are living in Iran under a brutal regime that has imposed poverty and misery upon them. A regime that is destroying our country, our culture, and is undermining our standing here. It is probably safe to say that those of us who ended up here in North America or in Europe are amongst the luckier and more privileged part of the Iranian diaspora. Therefore, we naturally carry more of responsibility in supporting our compatriots in Iran to free our motherland. And the first step in defending our identity and our community here is to emphasize that this regime does not represent us, does not represent our culture and our values. <laughs> Dear friends, before coming to the United States, I lived in France. There, I, le I learned an important lesson. The French considered the occupation of their country by the Nazis during the World War II as a very dark chapter in their history. Therefore, they have drawn a historical and moral red line. Politicians, businessmen, and even artists who collaborated with the Nazis were disgraced. Even those who remained indifferent did not have much to be proud of after the end of occupation. But those who stood up and fought against the Nazis are respected and cherished. That brings me to why we are here tonight. As one of the leaders of our community, Dr. Muridi echoed the plight of Iranian people trapped in a prison that is Iran today. As, an, as a human rights advocate, he defended the rights of all Iranians and set an example for all of us. This is why we will always remain grateful to Dr. Muridi and his service to our community. 
Dear Dr. Moridi, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jaya, for your kind words. Now, as you know, tonight's event was primarily an initiative by the members of Toronto Area and Canadian community, a community that Dr. Moridi has been officially represented for a very long time. Speaking about Dr. Moridi's influence on our community is Mr. Kaveh Shahnus. Yes, thank you. Kaveh is a lawyer with Magnum International, one of tonight's sponsors, a graduate of Harvard Law School, and has worked in a variety of areas of law, including the intersection of business and human rights. He's a former senior policy advisor to Canada's Department of Just Foreign Affairs and has been very active in a variety of initiatives in the Iranian Canadian community. Please jo join me in welcoming Kaveh Shahnus. Uh, before I get started, I gotta say, this event has a lot of moving parts, and it's really hard to stand up here in front of a thousand people and MC this, and uh, my friend Kimia has been knocking out of the park all night, so just a round of applause for her. So, good evening everybody, I will try to keep this very short. My wife, before I came on stage, said, hurry it up, I want to eat, so um, I will try to do this quickly. Um, so, good evening, I, I have to say a few words about Dr. Moridi's influence on the Iranian-Canadian community. And as I thought about how to do this, um, it occurred to me that there's an easy speech to give and a hard one. So let me explain. The easy speech to give is to list off all of Dr. Marini's actual tangible services that directly or indirectly benefited our community. So I can point to the fact that he introduced the motion at Queen's Park, proclaiming the first day of spring as Noru's, and introducing Noru's celebrations at Queen's Park, which I know um, Kathleen Wynne, when she was Premier, she attended quite frequently. I could point to his push for the recognition of an annual International Mother Languages Day, or the fact that, thanks to him, the written portion of the Ontario driver's test can now be done in Persian. I could point to his efforts to fundraise for victims of earthquakes in Iran, or his speeches in defense of the rights of Baha'is or political prisoners in Iran like Nasrin Sujudeh. And I could also tell you that his office door was always open to members of our community, even if they weren't technically his constituents in Richmond Hill, and to help them navigate the bureaucracy, be it immigration issues, be it finding work, be it accessing government services. And I could also point to the ways in which his work indirectly benefited our community. Um, things that maybe weren't directed at the Iranian community itself, but benefited us greatly. So his work on modernizing OSAP, for example, wasn't directly related to our community, but it surely helped thousands of young people and families in the Iranian Canadian community, like those in every other community. So all those things are true, and it would take a long time to list all the tangible ways in which he's helped us, but it could be done. But I think that would be the easy speech. The harder thing to do is to talk about that incredible, intangible thing that he did. And perhaps the best way of doing that is by telling you what he did for me. I came to this country in 1990 at the age of 10. And from a young age, I was deeply interested in politics. But there was a problem. The problem was that the politics of Canada were out of reach. Sure, politicians would let me volunteer on their campaigns, or they would let me take photos with them on occasion. But at the end of the day, I subtly understood, the way I think that a lot of us subtly understood, that Canadian politics had no meaningful role for someone with my background or with my unpronounceable name. And I subtly understood, I think we all subtly understood, that being really successful in politics in Canada wasn't for us. It was for guys with Anglo or Quebecois last names who looked a certain way and came from certain privileged backgrounds. And I believe that. And I think a lot of us believe that. That's until Reza Moridi came along. What Reza Moridi did in 2007 wasn't just to win a seat in provincial parliament. And what he did subsequently wasn't to gain a seat around the cabinet table based on his merit and his political acumen. What he did was to communicate to me, to you, and to those young people in our community who dream of having a seat at the decision-making tables in governments and in boardrooms, that it can be done. So 
today, today, there are now two Iranian Canadian MPs and two Iranian Canadian MPPs. And by my count, there are currently 16 Iranian Canadians running, running for municipal seats, all of them in Willowdale. Um, and, and there have been countless others who have sought nominations for political parties, and even more who are now staffers and advisors and chiefs of staff. And all of them owe a debt of gratitude to Dr. Marini. Dr. Marini, you opened the door. You showed us that it could be done. And you did it with grace, you did it with humility, you did it in a way that allowed all of us to, that belong to the Iranian community to hold our heads up a little bit higher with pride. So even if some of them don't thank you themselves, on behalf of those Canadian MPs, I thank you. On behalf of those MPPs, I thank you. On behalf of those municipal candidates, I thank you. On behalf of our entire community, I thank you. And on behalf of my 10-year-old self, I thank you. Thank you for being a pioneer. Thank you for showing me that it can be done. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pavan, for your insightful words and for helping us get a better sense of how Dr. Moradi has contributed to many generations of Iranian Canadians. And I know it's impossible for me to keep the chatter down at this point. I give in, guys, but this is this is the moment we've all been waiting for. Uh, I just want to mention one thing that, based on what Kave also spoke about, I myself and many of my friends and former colleagues in this room have been shaped by Dr. Moradi's work. Thank you, Dr. Moradi, for paving the way for all of us and for inspiring us to push borders, break boundaries, and impact the lives of um, many just like you have. Thank you very much, Kimia, for that kind introduction. Premier Win, MP Exasi, MPP Barso, Mayor Tory, Mayor Scarpiti, Mayor Barrow, Mr. Monty Quinter, Mr. Stephen Del Duca, Dr. Amir Khadi, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It has been a great privilege and honor to be able to serve the people of Richmond Hill at the Ontario Parliament for over a decade. And the Ontarians at the Cabinet of Premier Wynne for almost six years. I want to begin by thanking each and every one of you for being here this evening. Your continuous support and encouragement for more than 10 years have been the source of energy, inspiration, and enthusiasm for me in my journey in public service. I am truly humbled by your kindness and graciousness. Thank you very much. I want to thank my wife, Perry, my daughter, Marjan, my son-in-law, Frank, and my two beautiful granddaughters, Sabrina and Sarah, for their invaluable support. Perry has been a true inspiration and a partner all along in this journey. I want to take a moment and thank the organizing committee and the many volunteers who have made enormous efforts in putting together this memorable event. In particular, I want to thank Ali Bakili, 
سالی مسافر کاو شهروز مقداد حبیبی حمید قهرمانی سیاهوش اسدپور شری تباتبای رضا غازی هوشنگ شانس فرخ زندی زرین محیدین صابر اسماعیل زاده کیمیا قربان نجمه حاجی پور رامبود افشاری نسرین الماسی نسرین دانشور فخری افشاری شیما حیدری اند رونق زمانی I also want to thank my many colleagues who supported me, I don't want to say former colleagues, still there my colleagues, who supported me with their hard work, loyalty and dedication over the years. In particular, I want to say thank you to Olivia Nero, Sally Musawa, Nilu Burun, Kimya Burban, Azal Momen, Sharmin Hassaniani, Lauren Sark, Corey Mulhill, who was my chief of staff, Ramud Afshari, Najwa Amin, Louis Smedeliari, Roosevelt Fahadi, and the Saeed Sajjadi. Please give them a loud applause. I also want to thank and acknowledge Afi Marduki for her friendship, assistance, and advice, and for her dedication to serve the community. Thank you very much. My special thanks are due to MP Ali Sasi, MPP Michael Parsa, MPP Goldie Gamari for their friendship and also for their service to Ontario and our country, Canada. I also want to thank Nazanin Afshinjan, Mehdad Hariri, Kabe Shahruz, Hassan Dai for their kind words and for being so gracious. Thank you very much. Premier Wim, thank you for your confidence in me. It has been a privilege and honor to serve in your cabinet. And I thank you, Premier, for your over two decades of hard work and leadership in building our province of Ontario up. Thank you very much, Premier Wim. Mayor Tory, thank you so much for the kind words and for your exemplary leadership as the mayor of Canada's largest city. You are such a dear friend. Mayor, yes. <laughs> mayor Barrow, Mary Scarpitti, Stephen Del Duca, Monty Quinton. John Mills, and Altop Station Wallen. It has been a pleasure working with you over the years, improving transit in York region, bringing York University campus to Markham, and building Mackenzie Health Hospital in Vaughan. Thank you. My friends, some of you may know that my family and I arrived at Pearson Airport midnight on February 9th, 1990 with only four suitcases. Canada accepted me and my family with open and warm arms. And this evening, here I am. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my story, and I am certain that this is also the story of many of you in this room. We are absolutely blessed to be Canadians and to live in, in this paradise.
And for that, we all owe a lot to our country, Canada. My friends, we can only pay our dues to our wonderful country, Canada, by serving this wonderful land with our hard work, dedication, and selfless community work and public service. I tried my best in almost past three decades, and I will continue to serve my country, Canada, for the rest of my life. Thank you very much. Bless you for accepting. I want to thank you for your wisdom and for your light, your patience, your guidance, your wonderful ideas. We're inspired by you every day. So if I could ask the members of the organizing committee to get on the stage, and we're going to, Mr. Vakili and Dr. Asad, we're going to present you with something. Those of you who cannot see this gift, uh, it's a copper sheet that was that, that has been intricately worked on with a message, with a message of kindness and gratitude.
to be elected, as we know. It's only fitting for us as the town of Richmond Hill to name one of our streets, Hermia. To acknowledge the Iranian community, but also to acknowledge you, sir, our friend. said, you 
unleash the minds of young people in our country and we can do anything, compete with anyone around the world. And from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom of the hearts of many in Markham, in York Region, I want to say it was Minister Marini that came to the city of Markham to announce the new campus for York University, which is going to help all of our communities here in York Region. So thank you, God bless you, and may you have an enjoyable new chapter in your life. Congratulations. I'm just thrilled that I handed to Dr. Marini, and I, I love how his virtue as a person who provides his cell phone and his email address to everybody is a virtue until you start working for Dr. Marini, because it's the staff that has to often respond to some of those emails, and no email, no phone call goes unresponded, and, that, and, and that's the sort, that's the type of uh, man Dr. Marini really is.
دوستان صادق و نازنین بودی که در گذشته ها سیره به سیره به ما رسوندن و چون همیشه متاسفانه این زیر بعد شامل حال هست کوتاه سخن می کنم و و میریم سراغ اول آهنگ شب مرتاب دوست باشده خواهش میکنم به افتخار خودتون مجدد یه دست بزنید آهنگ اول در خدمت هست Yeah. 
Mercy. Oh, yeah. 